again, we talked about uh, forgiveness and letting go and letting God and how it's a requirement from the Lord that we cultivate uh, the mind, the posture, and especially uh, the attitude of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, most especially in the area of being injured uh, by others. And uh, we won't uh, sugarcoat it at all. This is probably one of the most difficult areas in which uh, we are to grow as children of God. Uh, because to let go and to let God is not uh, by any means a natural human uh, characteristic. Uh, it is only possible uh, by being transformed by the strength, by the might, and by the power of God. Is that all right? So this evening, I want to encourage you to go with me to the book of Romans, chapter 12, and we won't uh, belabor. Uh, we will start in what was read in your hearing in the verse number 17, keeping in mind that the context of this scripture speaks uh, to the exhortation and the encouragement of our practical daily living. In other words, our latreo worship, our reasonable service to God. Is that all right? We are to, as children of God, prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. And the truth of the matter is that nothing brings out more than what we're made of than adversity. Ver adversity really reveals character. If you want to know the measure of a man, if you want to know the measure of a woman, and especially with us, if you want to know the measure of a Christian, go through some adversity into your life, and you'll see what you're made of. Is that all right? So he says in verse number 17, if you have it, say amen. Recompense to no man, evil for evil. Is that all right? Recompense meaning give, pay back, restore, or return. And in this case, it means in a bad sense. So he's telling us to pay back, return, restore, to no man, evil for evil. Is that all right? And in this text, he's saying any wickedness, any malice, and any inner evil that works ill towards someone and flows out of, watch this, it actually flows out of a morally rotten character. So what comes out of people, amen, Jesus said the, out of the mouth, the abundance of the heart speaketh. So what comes out of us is what is truly in us. Is that all right? So he's saying don't pay back anyone evil for evil. But again, it's, it's all about our mind and it's all about our attitude. And, uh, and, and again, I, I need to say this again because it's the truth. This is one of the most difficult precepts or commands for us to adapt to in Christianity. But you have to understand, when it comes to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who had to live just like we live as a man, amen, he couldn't use his prerogatives to get through life. He couldn't use his prerogatives as God to get over strife from others and having to deal with being injured from others, amen. And, and notice who he had to always deal with. He always had to deal with religious folk. Is that all right? So when it, when it comes to the church, if there anybody, if, if anyone understands, is Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right? But you have to understand, Jesus is, is unyielding when it comes to this subject. He not only requires, but he demands 
that this specific command, not paying back evil for evil, he requires and demands that it be obeyed for all of us who will follow him. I want you to look with me real quick in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And I'm sure we've looked at this before. And maybe when we looked at this before, we just continued to read. And we didn't want to meditate on this one too long. But it's in the Bible anyhow. And it's required of Jesus anyhow. It's amazing how some things we love to quote and other things we just stay away from. Is that all right? Amen about it, right? Sometimes we, we have our favorite things, and some of our favorite things and so, is not some of the most difficult things we ought to be doing, right? Matthew chapter 5, starting with verse 38. If you're there, say amen. The Bible says, Jesus speaking says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, because that's what we used to say when we were in the world, right? You do something to me, I'm going to do something back to you. You say something to me, I'm going to say something back to you. Don't let me come out of retirement, as Sister Morel would say. Is that all right? But he says, but I say unto you. In other words, it's brand new now. I'm changing things. I don't care about what you heard. I don't care about how you used to live. I don't care about the way you used to think. All things change now that I'm on the scene. This is what Jesus is saying. But I say unto you that you resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Are you, are you, is that really in the Bible? And people still think men wrote this of their own accord? He says, if someone smites you on the right cheek, give him the other one also. Ain't too many amens on that one. Then he says, and if any man will sue thee at law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him too. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou not away. Yes, we're, we're skipping over those, aren't we? But this is Jesus setting a standard for those who will follow him. Now, the question for you and I is, how are we going to make these things part of our daily life? How are we going to really implement this in our lives? Is that all right? And we have to go back to Romans chapter 12, chapter 12 in the latter part of verse number 17. Because after he says... Recompense to no man evil for evil. Watch what he says. He says, provide things honest in the sight of all men. Provide is interesting here. This word provide in the original language means, literally it means before think. That's what it literally means. But watch this. In other words, as children of God, we must take the necessary forethought. We have to plan. We have to practice beforehand. And we have to beforehand have a fixed purpose in our heart, in our mind, and in our spirit for acting properly in God's will. In other words, he's saying provide things honest in the sight of all men. In other words, as a Christian, I need to already have made my mind up that I want to do what's right in the sight of God. No matter what comes, I'm already 
already prayed and had my devotion to God today to say, you know what? Whatever comes today, I made up my mind that I'm going to do God's will. Now, the thing is, you just can't make your mind up on Sunday and come back next Sunday. You got to make your mind up each and every day, sometimes, many times, throughout the day. Are y'all getting this? He said, provide, provide things honest. In other words, those things that are honorable, those things that are beautiful, comely, that do not bring discredit or reproach upon the Lord nor the faith. Amen. So we have to make up our minds when I go to work, when I'm with my family, when I'm in the community, when I'm with myself, I, I want to make up my mind that I'm going to do things right in the sight of God, and I don't want to do anything that's going to bring reproach or discredit God. I don't want to give anybody an opportunity to mock my father. Is that all right? You see, we have to make up our minds because the alternative, if we don't make up our minds, the alternative is that we leave our spirit subject to the fluctuations of feelings and the influence of excitement. In other words, we need to be proactive spiritually instead of reactive. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Many times we go out the house and we just react to situations. And when we react, sometimes the carnal man shows up when you react. We need to be proactive. Amen. Y'all looking kind of funny. All right. You see, when we react, when we allow ourselves to be subject to our feelings, amen, that will engender strife and malice in a spirit of revenge. This is why he then says in verse 18, if it be possible, as much as lieth within you, live peaceably with all men. You say, well, what, do you, what, do you, what does that mean? As much as, uh, as much as lieth within me. Well, I ain't got too much lying in me today, you may say. But that ain't what it's talking about. What it's talking about is... We are to make every effort towards peace. We are to make every effort towards peace. We are to make every effort towards peace. I'm going to say it one more time until you say amen. We are to make every effort towards peace as children of God. Is that all right? Now watch this. We ought to make every effort towards peace, although there will be those who refuse to reciprocate the peace that we're trying to show. So in other words, in situations where there's, there's harm and injury going on, you, you make sure, and I need to make sure, that we're making every effort for peace to occur, even if it's not reciprocated. In other words, when God looks at it, he knows that you have done all your all, your all to make sure it's peaceful. If there's no peace in the situation, it's not for a lack of your effort. It's on the, on the other person's effort. Because that's what you're going to give account for. You can't go to God on judgment day and say, well, they, well, they had a funny, they, they had a nasty look on their face, so I ain't even. No, you can't do that. You got to make every effort. Hebrews 12, 14. I know it's tough. Amen. Y'all pray for me. All right. Can I just say this? Sometimes people think that the preacher just got, got things all together. I'm telling you, the enemy, the enemy doesn't fight fair. He doesn't fight fair. All right? He has sneak attacks. Sneak attacks. Where people laugh in your face and they smile in your face, but they're about to cut your throat. And instead of trying to come one-on-one -on -one with you, they'll go to, to somebody in your family and try to mess with them. 
Y'all ain't getting this. Y'all need to pray for those who serve. I'm here to tell you. It's not an easy thing to serve. All right? It's not easy. Okay, that's my little venting. All right. Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace. Follow, which means, watch this, pursue earnestly with all haste like a hunter pursuing a catch. Follow peace with all men. You see, peace is a fruit of the spirit, right? So following or pursuing peace is what spiritual people do. Is that all right? That's why, you know, it's sometimes we look at it as a bad thing sometimes when there's issues sometimes in the church, you know. And, and what I've learned is sometimes things are healthy. It's healthy sometimes to have disagreements. I didn't say fights. I didn't say slander. I didn't say backbiting. I didn't say bitterness. All right? But we're not going to always agree on the same thing. Sometimes we can agree just to disagree. But we don't got to fuss and fight about it. Is that all right? If you and I disagree, I ain't got to go over here and try to get them to go against y'all. We just got a disagreement, and we'll let God work it out between us. We don't have to get nobody else involved. That's spiritual maturity. Amen. Spiritual immaturity says I'm going to go get everybody else and I'm going to go through this whole congregation to see who feels like I feel. That's spiritual immaturity. Is that all right? So we have to do what God will call us to do. Amen. Verse 19. Let's hurry up through here. Verse 19. Romans 7 chapter 12 verse 19. Dearly beloved, dearly beloved, dearly beloved. He's about to give them some great encouragement right now. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Avenge not yourselves. You see, there's a high cost of getting even. There's a very high cost to getting even. And many times when we're offended, many times when someone injures us, it's just natural to want to get even. You ever, you ever notice how you don't really have to go uh, to college uh, to want to get revenge on somebody? You don't have to take a class on that? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You don't have to go to Bible study for that. That just happens naturally. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen about it. It happens naturally. It even starts off with pre-K kids. One kid takes another kid's toy, and they just start hollering and whining and scratching and kicking. You don't have to be taught some of these things that we do. Amen. And when I'm talking about pre-K, I'm talking about in the church. I'm talking about 70-year-olds, 60-year-olds fussing and fighting in God's house. Lord have mercy. So he says, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Avenge, meaning to vindicate. Don't vindicate yourself. Don't defend yourself. More importantly, avenge carries the idea of dispensing or carrying out judgment. All right? Did y'all get that? So he says, avenge not yourself. Don't carry out your own judgment or your own justice. I'm sorry. Don't carry out your own justice. All right? You can't be judge and jury or jury and judge, however the saying goes. Is that all right? That's God's business. He says, avenge not yourself, but rather give place to wrath. Rather give place to wrath. Now, what does that mean? Give place. This idea in the Greek is you again from this morning let go and you leave it to God. Give place to wrath. You let go, you leave it alone, and you let God do what only he can do. Are y'all getting this? Because sometimes we want to take matters into our own hands. 
Y'all looking funny again. Mm. You see, uh, I want to close with this. There's, there's two things when we talk about the high cost of getting even. There's two things that we're going to have to really pay attention to, all right, when it comes to the high cost of getting even. Number one, when we avenge ourselves, we actually usurp and infringe on the sovereign prerogatives of the Almighty God. We actually usurp his authority. Now, I know sometimes we only talk about usurp when it comes to uh, women doing things in the church. But I'm here to tell you, men can usurp as well. Is that all right? You don't have to be trying to preach or do something that God ain't instruct you to do to usurp something. You can just want to get revenge on someone, and that's usurping. All right? You're trying to take the, the place of God. Are we getting this? So, again, number one is when we uh, try to recompense evil for evil, when we try to avenge ourselves, number one, we actually usurp and infringe on the sovereign prerogatives of the Almighty God. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30 says, We know the God who said, I alone, I alone have the right to take revenge. I will pay back. God also said, the Lord will judge his people. Is that all right? He says, I'm the Lord, I will repay. Vengeance is mine, right? Are we getting this? That's what he says in the latter part of verse number 19. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Is that all right? So that's the first thing. Genesis 50 also, let me give you this one. Genesis 50, 19. You remember the story of Joseph, right? You remember what his brothers did to him, right? And it got to a point when their father died, when Jacob died. Y'all remember that? That his brothers got scared and they thought that he was going get, to get them back for what they did to him, right? Uh, he's going to get us now. But watch what he says in Genesis 50 and verse 19. And Joseph said unto them, fear not. For am I in the place of God? In other words, you don't have to worry about me getting you back. Because you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Is that all right? And even if I wanted to get you back, I wouldn't do it because I have fear of my God. Is that all right? So he says, I'm not in the place of God. I'm not going to do this because that's not my business. That's God's business. Number two, when we recompense evil for evil and when we avenge ourselves, the number two thing that happens is we're actually overcome with evil. Verse 21 of Romans 12 again says, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. So actually, in other words, when we do take it upon ourselves to render evil for evil or avenge ourselves, we actually are overcome with evil because we allow for our temper to become excited, enraged, and revengeful to the point where we engage in contention with those who have injured us. And that causes us stress, it causes us anxiety, it causes us all kind of problems to raise our blood pressure, give us headaches, cause us not to sleep, cause us to walk around with a bitter attitude and spirit. Is that all right? Y'all remember William used to talk about, give the illustration of when you're mad at someone, they don't even know you're mad at them. You're sitting there taking a rat poison yourself, and they're around enjoying their day, walking and smiling, and you sitting over there mad. Got a pit in your stomach because they're in the same room with you. Is that all right? Bitterness will eat as a cancer. It will eat as a cancer. 
if you allow it to grow. All right? The best thing to do to, to deal with bitterness is to learn how to forgive. Learn how to forgive. Learn how to just let it go. Learn how to forgive. Ask God to help you deal with these issues because God is able. Is that all right? The only thing that's going to hurt when you do it God's way is your pride. And that's something that you don't need in the first place. Is that all right? If we would just learn to get our pride out of the way, we will be okay. Is that all right? I want you to go with me to 1 Peter as we close. 1 Peter, and we're, we're done. 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. The high cost of getting even. 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to start with verse number 8. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse number eight. When you have it, say amen. amen. Word of God says, finally, be all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as what? Be pitiful, be courteous. Watch this now. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. In other words, God will bless you when you do good to people who do wrong to you. Is that all right? Then he says, for he that will love life, all right, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Because sometimes we, we think we can get away with, well, I didn't do nothing to them. I just said some things. Or oh, I just, maybe I got on social media and posted some things. Amen. But these things, God sees everything. All right? So, so don't, don't, don't let your tongue get you in trouble. It's amazing how the tongue is the smallest member, but it sets your whole body on fire. Is that all right? You can talk on the phone. You can text all you want to and think it's just you and the person and y'all getting down on the phone. But God sees everything. Are we getting this? He says, let him depart from evil or eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Why? For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil and many times let me just say this many times because we don't get an immediate response from God when we do wrong we think we get away with it not that we get away with it. God is long-suffering. God is patient with all of us. Because as we just read, if we ain't saying it, sometimes we thinking it. So many times we have to repent for the very thoughts we had. I ain't spoke no bad about you. I haven't done any bad about, uh, to you. Well, sure, I've been thinking about it. If thoughts can kill, y'all ever think about that? If thoughts can kill,
probably wouldn't be nobody in here tonight. Amen about it. Church, we're just going to have to ask God to help us. We're just going to have to break down, humble ourselves, and ask God to help us. Because no matter how strong we think we are, the cost of giving e- getting, evil, getting even is it can send you to a devil's hell. It's not worth it. Is that all right? I've said enough. I want to encourage you to pray for one another. Let's make sure that we're really about God's business in this congregation. That doesn't mean that we won't have disagreements. That won't that doesn't mean that I won't get on your nerve. That doesn't mean that I won't get on your nerve. That doesn't mean that I won't get on your nerve. Y'all can say man. You thinking it? All right, LaCroix, that's enough amens. but we can still grow together in the Lord. That's the mark of true Christians to where we can lay aside our differences and let Christ reign in our hearts. Is that all right? That's the mark of a true spiritual Christian and a true spiritual church is to where, guess what? When it comes down to what he said, that settles it, and we can all just move ahead. Amen. Say, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I was wrong. Let's continue to work. Is that all right? That's what it's about. Amen. You're here this afternoon. If you've not obeyed the gospel, you can come having heard the word. Do you believe it? Are you willing to repent of your sins, confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God, And then in obedience, be buried in baptism for the remission of your sins. You can come do that. And if there's any among us who have obeyed the gospel and we're in need of prayer, and the truth of the matter is, we all need prayer. So I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Let's all stand and let's hold hands. And let's go to God in prayer.